Oh, okay. Please, go ahead. Great. Thank you very much, Daniela. Um, so full disclosure, I, I, I didn't schedule myself to give a, give a talk here. It's a uh, late cancellation and a request to turn our poster into a talk. Um, as Linda really helpfully pointed out in her, her talk the other day, these things start with an abstract, and we have all of these great ideas and great plans, and of course then reality starts, inserts itself. And, um, so our initial intention here was to look at the entire Africa Cortex on, um, Ensemble to explore the dynamics that are important for the seasonal cycle of precipitation over East, East Africa um, in particular. Um, that, uh, that didn't happen, but we have looked into our own evaluation simulation um, of the, um, the era interim driven runs. Um, and I'd like to thank our, the, the colleagues on, who have helped on this, especially Yu Min Chen, who performed these simulations and was responsible for the, uh, almost all of the figures that you'll see in the rest of the talk. So the, the motivation is you know, clear. Um, East Africa, um, Horn of Africa, East African, uh, tropical East African region um, uh, has, a, has a complex topography with uh, high elevations in the Ethiopian highlands here. Um, it is home to the East African low-level jet. It's also affected by the uh, upper-level easterly tropical jet. Um, it has a number of rainy seasons, um, not just a dry season, wet season. The highlands in, in Ethiopia here um, have, a, um, have a season in February to May called Bel, um, uh, in, uh, called Kuremt. Um, and then in February to May, we have the Belg rainfalls that occur along the, the coastal areas of the Horn of Africa, but also inland in Uganda and Kenya. Um, and then uh, also there are the October to December short rains that come in along, um, along here as well. Um, these are all tightly linked to the movement of the ITCZ, um, north, and, north and south through the year. Um, and they're also linked to large-scale atmospheric dynamics. Um, so again, these low level, the East African low-level jet, um, as well as the, uh, the upper-level jet and disturbances that occur along, along this. Um, and, and further, which is an interesting question for, uh, um, for, for further study, is that these, these large-scale uh, features are very important for the South Asian monsoon as well. Um, and this could motivate possible studies, not just for how the various cortex regions um, express teleconnections from outside the region, but also how the regions themselves then feed, ba feed back into um, potentially uh, projecting onto, um, onto other areas, right? Um, so the, the failures of rainfall in, these, in this area are a recurring phenomenon with major droughts. This is a figure from the 2000, recent 2011 drought showing um, food scarcity, the darker colors, obviously, more scarcity. Um, and of course, we already know that the climate projections for this area are, are quite, um, quite, un, quite uncertain, but it's potentially a highly vulnerable area. So the objectives here are not to uh, evaluate our simulation with respect to the seasonal cycle of rainfall. This has been done. Um, I'll show some precipitation, uh, some precipitation plots in movies, but it's really to motivate the dynamical analysis. Um, we want to explore the dynamical and thermodynamical drivers of the seasonal cycle. Um, in particular, we want to see how the simulation is reproducing the seasonality and synoptic patterns of the tropical easterly jet, low-level jet, um, and we have a very coarse measure of, um, of stability, such instability in the atmosphere um, and a proxy for moist static energy that, will be, that I'll be talking about. Um, and it really motivates further study into the moist dynamics in, the, in these simulations and how we can possibly improve that. So this is the region that when I show the aerially averaged plots in the coming slides, this is the region that's been averaged over. It's quite large. Um, this creates some smoothing issues, but um, it's also, we wanted to start from the large scale to be able to capture the large scale dynamics, and then we'll start to home in on this in later studies on the, the Horn of Africa proper. Um, yep. So, and that was annual rainfall, by the way, for the uh, air interim period. So you can, um, this is from our simulations. So this is the highlands, which is captured quite well. Um, this is more Central Africa. I won't be talking about that so much. Um, 
and yes, move on. So the seasonal cycle here, this is the hourly average, this is for error interim, GPCP, crew, and trim. And here's our nice warp simulation down here. So you can quite nicely see that we capture these, these seasonal cycles with this area averaging get superimposed on top of each other. So we capture the February to May um, bell, tremt, and the, um, in the short range of October, November, December, quite nicely. And all of these products show similar patterns. Um, yeah, there we go. Hi there. <laughs> and so the wharf simulation only captures this um, this peak in this peak in late summer, and then, so the current rainfalls that are the orographically induced rainfall rains over the um, Ethiopian highlands, um, and we can see that here in these in the movies. So this is the era interim on the left, um, and dwarf on the right, going through the annual cycle. In particular, I want you to look at what isn't happening along here in the dwarf simulation. Um, we know era interim also has its problems with uh, with with precipitation. Um, but if we look at two of the other products here, GPCP and Trim, we see that they, um, you know, the error interim and it also quite shows this as well, but these products also show quite clearly the precipitation um, along the lowlands that is missing in the, in the war simulation. This has also been noted in other uh, Africa Cortex simulations, this, this tendency to, um, to you know, overestimate the precipitation in the highlands and miss the low and miss the lowlands. Um, so it's it's not terribly unique. I don't know how much worse it is than any others, but uh, it's there. So what's going on with the dynamics, and is is this a source of some of these some of these issues? Um, this is the aerially averaged uh, upper level and uh, low level jet. Um, and actually, the wharf simulation on the right, or interim on the left, um, the simulation actually quite accurately captures the um, east, tropical easterly jet and the seasonality. This is their interim, this is wharf. Um, it's a little bit too strong if you look at the, um, I think it's, the, oh, you know, do, 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 do. Wait, wait, just want to make sure that that's the right one there. Um, yeah, their interim was stronger on this one, so. Um, and so it's a little bit weak, sorry, in the, in the, in the wharf simulation. Um, and down at the, at the lower levels, it's, um, no, you're right, too strong, sorry. <laughs> and uh, down at the lower level, though, it's quite close to, um, to reproducing the seasonal cycle and the magnitude of the East African low-level jet. So it's capturing these features quite nicely. And if we, if we look at the um, upper level synoptic maps and uh, the, seasonal, the, you know, the seasonal movies, you can, see, you can see quite clearly when the onset, onset occurs, this is temperature and wind at 200 hectopascals as it cycles through. And it's a little, yeah, so the wharf is a bit too strong on this one. Um, down at the lower level, though, it's it's much closer, um, and and captures the timing and also the placement um, of the East African level of the jet. I should say that this is shouldn't be a surprise. It should do this. It has these as boundary. You know, it gets error interim and boundary conditions. Two minutes already. Wow, great. And so um, you know, we would hope that it would do this. Um, so this is encouraging. Um, when we get to the, uh, the thermodynamics, however, it's a bit more problematic. This is upper, middle, lower levels. Um, the basic story for Eastern Africa, aside from the uh, orographically induced precipitation in the highlands, is that you have strong low-level convergence um, along, along the coast, mid-level divergence, and then upper-level convergence. Um, and so we see distinct cycles in the temperature differences between layers, so the, between the 200 and 500 hectopascal layer here, the 500 and 850, and down the 850 to the surface. And WARF only weakly reproduces these and with um, somewhat deferring magnitudes as well. Um, and I'm going to skip over the upper troposphere because that's not as interesting because we know now that the, um, that the, the, the the lowland rainfall is mainly driven by moist static energy convergence um, on, along the coast here. Um, and so what these 
plots are, are showing the movement of the ITCZ quite nicely, um, but you can see that WARF is, um, is not capturing the, uh, the convergence in, the, in this area um, in the later part of the year. So, what we've found so far, um, and, and we'll have to continue further on this though, is that it captures the intensity in orographically induced current rainfall, but fails in most other respects. Um, it captures the main dynamical features that are important for the seasonal cycle here, so that's good. There's something to work with here. Um, but it only weakly captures the thermodynamical features, and I suspect as we go into the moist dynamics, we'll find that that's also an issue as well. Um, we now know from recent uh, theory, uh, work on the theory of the, uh, convection for this area, that it's a ventilated process. So that's going to be really difficult for our modeling systems to capture. Um, and it's driven mainly by the very near surface moist static energy coming off of the um, Indian Ocean. So future directions, da, 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 da. obviously lots to do. Um, we are very much interested um, in principle in being involved in any kind of Cortex Africa uh, FPSs that are looking at the higher resolutions um, for these sorts of areas. Um, and uh, finding solutions to some of these problems that are persistent in, these, in the simulations, and then of course expanding to the rest of the Cortex Ensemble. So thank you very much, enjoy your lunch. And one last thing, <laughs> shameless self-promotion. Um, in Bergen, at the end of uh, August, we are hosting the fourth Nordic Conference on Climate Change Adaptation. Um, so if those are interested, there's a link here. Um, yep, yeah, and, uh, and uh, you can always, of course, contact me directly if you're interested in this conference. So, yep, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much for keeping the time. We, although we have an announcement, we have uh, time for one question. <laughs> Yes. Uh, most, and it affects uh, position of ITCZ. Uh, so what, what do you think? Uh, so should it be included in, uh, in this analysis? Samuel? <laughs> Can I kick that question? Okay, the question was aerosol forcing. Um, do I think it's important and should it be included? Um, I can say for our simulations, we do not have the aerosols um, in that. Um, and I would say that, uh, yes, they probably should be included um, in this future. Uh, Samuel Somo had gathered information on not Africa Cortex, but for all of the other Med Cortex and Euro Cortex as well. And this was something in the Cortex, uh, uh, the, the coordination of the experiments that was not uh, defined, that it was required. It was, people were left to their own devices on it. So. My point is that for North Africa, it is especially important. Because mm -hmm. medical depths, for example, over at sea in summer is about one. So, and you just in this region. So it cannot be not important for us. No, I agree completely. Yeah. Okay, we have to close the session.